major industrial growth. Museo Roca. Social protests. Former President Julio Argentino Roca. Se puede conquistar un desierto. Can a desert be conquered? Like most things in history, Roca exists in a historical gray area when it comes to like ethics and morality. Welcome back everyone to Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are back in Buenos Aires. Today we are in the Recoleta neighborhood. We're actually right next to, right here on the other side of this wall, Recoleta Cemetery, where we visited in a previous video, we went and saw the grave of Eva Perón. But today, we're not here to see the cemetery. We're here to see something else. Right down the street, this way, about, oh, I don't know, a block, block and a half, there is an interesting spot. It is Museo Roca the Roca Museum, and is a museum that is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it's in the house, the former house, of a famous um, Argentine historical figure, Jose Arce, and it studies another famous and kind of controversial uh, Argentine historical figure, former president Julio Argentino Roca. So let's go check it out. Come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. There it is, Museo Roca. Museo Roca, right here, next to Recoleta Cemetery. It's right on the other side of that wall. And we're here a little bit early. It's gonna open in just a few minutes. But before it opens, let's talk a little bit about Arce and Roca. So Arce and Roca, like I mentioned, are both very famous, famous Argentine historical figures. Arce was uh, formerly a doctor. Well, he started off his professional career as a doctor. He was a professor of medicine during the uh, early to mid 20th century. And then later on during the Perón era in the 1940s, he was uh, an ambassador. He was an ambassador to China. And he was also the first ambassador to the United Nations from Argentina. He actually, while well, was ambassador to the United Nations, served as the president of the UN General Assembly as well. So quite an accomplished guy. and. He had this house down here in Recoleta, right next to the cemetery we're walking past right now, where he actually is buried. Uh, Roca is also buried in Recoleta Cemetery. There are a lot of famous Argentines buried in Recoleta Cemetery. Um, but uh, Jose Arce, he uh, had this house down here, which he had commissioned to be built during the 1930s. He had separated from his wife um, after the tragic death of their daughter and he had this house built and as a part of the the house i guess he wanted to create a museum to study former president julio argentino roca because roca uh, is a very very controversial important very important historical figure in argentina's uh very influential in argentina's history but also very controversial and at the time in the uh you know 19 40s, roughly, uh, when Arce was around. That's um, long after, or that's, that's after um, Roca's death. Roca was president uh, back in the 1880s, and he, uh, he was president during a time when there was great economic and industrial and infrastructure growth here in Argentina, but there were also a lot of uh, problems uh, a lot of problems with like wealth disparity and um, and a lot of uprisings and some very controversial military campaigns against indigenous people in the south uh, part of Argentina. So 
like I said, Roca is a quite a controversial figure, but um, Arce wanted to create a space where uh, the his history of President Roca could be studied. That's basically it. We're gonna learn more about Roca for sure, um, because like I said, he's very, um, very important figure in Argentine history, but also very, very controversial. And the period in which he was president, which is known as La Generación de Ochentas, the generation of the 80s, meaning 1880, uh, was basically a political party, political movement, um, that they, they were in power for almost 40 years, from 1882, I believe 1916, and they maintained their power through um, arguably fraudulent elections. They maintained power on behalf of rich landowners, and they actually fought wars and conquered lands from indigenous people, like I said, in the south part of Argentina, um, to take those lands and then, um, and then distribute them amongst the wealthy landowners. So, like I said, controversial for sure, but also during this period, it was one of the periods of Argentina's greatest economic growth, population growth, um, a lot of the infrastructure and the, indu the industry that you see in Argentina today that makes Argentina um, such, a, such a sort of a powerhouse and very metropolitan. It was all, a lot of it came from that era and it was an era when Argentina was one of the wealthiest countries in the whole world. And that wealth and the expansion of the economy the industry, the agricultural sector, and the infrastructure of Argentina ultimately had major, major effects on the country. We talk in previous videos about how certain areas of the country, um, especially like over in Salta where we were before we were here in Buenos Aires, that there wasn't really a lot of economic opportunity in certain times until the railroad extended out there. Same thing in Mendoza the West. Once the railroad reached those two cities, there was a major boom, major population boom, because it was very easy to get out there, to move out there with the railroad. So ultimately, there were many positive effects from the generation of the 80s, the progress that was made, but that progress came at a great cost, because in addition to um, the brutal campaigns in the southern, the desert campaign as it's called, in the southern parts of Argentina, um, there were, there was a growing middle class in Argentina because of the economic expansion and be, that growing middle class wanted to try and wrestle power away from, um, from the wealthy landowners who were, you know, the, uh, the patrons of the politicians of the generation of the 80s. And that led to a lot of uprisings, um, revolutions, and attempted revolutions. So it was not exactly a stable time, um, economically or politically, for Argentina, but it was a time of great growth and great progress. Now, one of the things about Roca, before we actually head to the museum, the last thing I will point out is, um, when I'm saying these things about him and about Argentina in general, it's important to remember, I'm not just trying to like shit on Argentina. Um, obviously, Argentina has a very complicated history and a very complicated past. So does my country, the United States. Man, we can go on and on about the complicated and controversial history of the United States because man, it is long, complicated, and controversial. But I am just pointing out that um, Roca was, was uh, like most things in history, Roca exists in a historical um, gray area when it comes to like ethics and morality. One thing I'd like to point out when I'm talking about the corruption specifically of uh, the government of Julio Argentino Roca, um, this isn't stuff that I'm just making up. It's actually well documented. And Roca actually had a brother. His brother's name was uh, Atalivar. Uh, oh no, Ataliva. His brother's name was Ataliva Roca. And his brother was kind of the guy who was um, in charge of all the corruption. 
if there was going to be someone who was going to go out and bribe, uh, uh, you know, a businessman or accept a bribe, uh, it was going to be, um, it was going to be him. And so, so much so that there came to be a verb coined, um, atelivar. Atelivar means to, uh, or at least it did for a long time here in Argentina, to participate in corruption, to participate in bribery. That verb lasted from the time of Roca in the 1880s all the way up through like the middle of the 20th century. So, um, like I mentioned, <laughs> it's, not, it's not just me saying these things. These, these are things that are well documented. And uh, they, like I said, they sort of contribute to the history of, um, of Julio Argentino Roca and his controversial history and also his very interesting history, I think, personally. Um, I'm sure people in the comments are probably going to have strong opinions about Roca one way or another. And that's fine. There are plenty, like I said, of historical figures in the United States that I have very strong opinions about and that I know other people do as well. But the important thing is, uh, regardless of how you feel about Roca, it's very, very important, very influential to the history of Argentina. And that's why I think it's very important that we go check out this museum, which is open now. So let's go check it out. Museo Roca, Instituto de Investigaciones Históricas, the Institute of Historical Investigations. Okay, we're inside the museum. It is free to get in. Now, here's something actually interesting. Um, not during Roca's presidency. In fact, Roca was staunchly, staunchly opposed to expanding suffrage to other people. But towards the end of the era of the uh, generation of 80s, um, the vote was expanded. Suffrage was expanded out to other uh, populations within uh, Argentina. And actually, voting is compulsory in Argentina. Which I think is really interesting as someone from the United States, especially because we're like in election season when this is being filmed in the United States. And um, one of the things that that we always I'm always thinking about during election season, at least in the United States, people are thinking about is how, what percentage of the population is actually going to go out and vote. Um, whereas here, you have to you have to vote. Strategies of peace. So this is the conquest of the desert that I was mentioning. And it is something that Roca is famous for, also uh, infamous for, in that he took over, he fought military campaigns, his government, to take over large parts of the southern part of Argentina, which were controlled mainly by indigenous populations. And um, a lot of those indigenous populations ended up being either killed during the battle, relocated, um, and an attempt was made to sort of integrate them into Argentine society, similar in a way to like the United States. We have protestas, social protests. And like I said, during Roca's presidency, there were, um, and during the generation of the 80s in general, there were a lot of uh, protests, uprisings, mainly from trade unions, um, trade syndicates and things like that, labor unions, because the generation of the 80s, um, they were focused, um, almost blindly focused on progress, and to them progress meant growing the economy, um, improving the infrastructure and the industry of Argentina, but a lot of times that came at the cost of people's rights, workers' rights. And ultimately, at the end of the generation of the 80s, the new government that came in under President uh, Hippolito Irigoyen, Irigoyen uh, was a, a government that supported trade unions uh, from a political party that was um, very like very much built from trade unions. So it was a major right-wing neoliberal government movement during the generation of the 80s that swung 
hard to the left by the end of it in 1916. But of course, major industrial growth during the generation of the 80s. Argentina became a major, major exporter of wool, leather, beef, a lot of it going to, uh, to Great Britain. And the British, in turn, like invested a lot of capital in Argentina for infrastructure, industry, railroads, things like that. It's one of the things that made Argentina one of the richest, uh, wealthiest nations in the world at that time. And it's one of the things that also at that time um, like drew a lot of people to come to Argentina, to immigrate to Argentina, to try and um, to try and make their make their wealth. It was considered to be a real land of opportunity because of the open immigration policies and the massive, massive economic growth that was happening. So here it is, se puede conquistar un desierto. Can a desert be conquered? There's an old rifle, old sword. There's Roca, I guess, right there. Now these desert campaigns were actually happening before Roca was president. Yeah, this is uh, from 1879. That's before Roca was president. What do we have over here? Roquismo. Roquismo. Project Roquista, the Roca Project, Peace and Administration. Let's see, let's try to see how our Spanish reading skills are today. The priority of Roquismo was to create conditions, political conditions, um, and stable institutions to advance uh, progress, attract capital, El desarrollo, el área de infraestructura, like to create infrastructure, consolidate um, sovereign territory, uh, open up to massive immigration, and aspects of uh, ro uh, roquismo were liberal order. In political terms, it was a conservative order that centered around the power of a group of select elite, provincial elites, uh, who controlled the elections. And the rest of society participated in, in politics using channels of expression, alternative channels of expression, well, because they couldn't vote, basically. <laughs> like protests in the streets, organization, uh, and production of like intellectual materials. Basically, because they can consolidated power into just like the, a handful of very wealthy people and uh, didn't really allow anybody else any power, there were a lot of protests. Here's the Looks like this is the railroad. Uh, yeah, this shows, this actually shows the extents, like the extensive railroad network. And we mentioned this in some like previous videos, right? Of course, like when we went up, up into uh, to Salta, that tren a las nubes, train in the, in the clouds, right? The Argentine railroad used to just be massive. Um, it's not so much anymore. There's a lot of areas that have, like, routes that have just been closed that uh, they don't, 
They don't operate anymore. The way you get around Argentina now usually is either to fly from one city to another or you can take buses. But the railroad uh, just really doesn't cover what it used to cover. But you can see from this map it used to just be gigantic. Travels, vacations, travels. Yeah. Basically, a lot of the elites during the era traveled, traveled to a lot of other places around the world. Immigración. As mentioned before, major, major economic uh, boom led to major, major immigration. It's a major pull factor, right? There are push factors, of course, in the other countries, especially like in Italy, for example. The, uh, there was uh, major economic and political instability in Italy in the late 1800s. Uh, it's something we mentioned in the video we made about Italians and Argentines. Link in the description of that video. But the pull factor for Argentina was, you know, land of opportunity, right? The economic opportunity and the possibilities here during the late 1800s. A lot of immigrants, especially European immigrants. Educación. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mm. Yeah. Oh. Now the other cool thing about this uh, this museum is, like I mentioned, it's in the former house of uh, Jose Arce, and it's not just a museum to uh, to Roca. Of course, there is like a lot of interesting stuff here about Roca, but um, it is also sort of a preserved um, old home in this neoclassical style. This is a modern neoclassical style, which is essentially a cross between like the neoclassical architecture of the 18, late 1800s and the Art Deco architecture of like the early to mid, um, like early to mid. 1900s. It's a really, really cool building, and it's preserved. I think actually up on the second floor, it's preserved as it was when um, when Arce was living here with his second wife, who actually lived here up on the second floor, like after Arce's death. Um, she continued to live here with the museum operating down here on the first floor. That was until like the late 1960s, I think. And eventually the museum changed hands and now is like just a full on museum. Nobody's living here anymore. It's still really cool to see all the architecture. Let's see if we can go outside here. Oh, yeah. It's like this nice, like, courtyard back here. I think those are just like some offices for the staff here, but still, like, this is. So it'd be a very nice place to live, I'm not gonna lie. You could come out of your library back there and come out to the little courtyard here. Right, drink your mate. Not bad. El Museo que fue casa. The museum that was a house. Honoring Roca, the muse Roca Museum opened 19th of October, 1964. 50th anniversary of the death of uh, Julio Argentino Roca. We're actually filming, at the time we're filming this, we're, <laughs> we're quite close to uh, the 19th of October. We're not there yet, uh, but it's an interesting coincidence that we're here quite close, just within a couple of weeks of the anniversary of uh, Roca's death. Here's a statue. 
little statue of Roca right there from uh, 1910 and of course 50th anniversary it was in 1964 so he died Roca died in 1914 and then uh, this is uh, Jose Arce the former ambassador to China, former ambassador to the UN, former president of the UN Gen General Assembly, and the guy who lived in this house. Take one last look at the library here. And we can see if we can head upstairs. La vida en la casa. Between the decades of 1930 and 1960, Amelia Bazan and Jose Arce lived in this house. So Amelia Bazan, that's um, Arce's second wife. And she actually lived here after Arce's death, up here on the second floor. Oh yeah, so this is also Something, apparently, from what I read about the house, like, because it's, like, the architecture is very cool. Um, you can see from this bathroom, like, this is a very, like, I don't know, it's a cool bathroom. A lot of marble. Um, very interesting architecture. That this museum, this house, has also been used as a film set um, often. Nineteen twenty-six. Arce hired uh, architect Francisco Skirou Skirou to design the house. Francisco Skirou. You can see from the film here. There's some pictures of like from the actual time with the furniture and whatnot. Yeah, it's very very cool Art Deco style. Here they have some slideshow of a slideshow of that's Amelia, I guess. This I guess would be the bedroom. There's Jose Arce. Here's their desk desk, I guess. I think this well let's see. This is a passport of Maria Antonetta Arce. Oh, okay. I think I think this is actually his um, his daughter who who passed away. She died when she was like thirteen, I think, and that's ultimately led to uh, Arce separating from his first wife. Amelia and Jose were uh, travelers. They went to destinations including uh, America, Asia, Africa, and Europe. I mean, that, <laughs> that makes sense. Arce was a diplomat. He was a UN ambassador. He was president of the UN General Assembly. It would make sense that they were travelers. Amelia en el espejo. Yeah, this is what the bedroom, I guess, looks like with all the furniture in it. It's a very, very cool look. I think that's it. It looks like they're doing some restoration over here in this part of the museum. So it's not open right now. Uh, yeah, but this would have been the bar. Which looked like this. Very cool looking Art Deco bar. 
I think, I think that's it. You know, not, not only is this a museum, they're also s continuing to do historical study on Roca here. So it's very cool. It's very cool to see all of this stuff here about Roca. It's very cool to see the old house, what it looked like. But I think we've seen what there is to see here. Which I gotta say. So I think it's time that we head out. We head back out. We finish off this video here in uh, in Recoleta, right across from the Recoleta Cemetery, where Jose Arce and Julio um, Julio uh, Argentino Roca are buried, right there in Recoleta Cemetery. So you know, what do you say? What do you say about Roca? I knew a little bit about him before going to that museum. I knew that he was a very important figure, historical figure in Argentine history. I also know he's a very controversial figure in Argentine history. And while like during his uh, administration and the administration of other future presidents, we're all part of his same, um, same party and same political movement. There was great progress that was made here in Argentina great economic progress and industrial progress. The agricultural sector here in Argentina was expanded into uh, you know, the major, major agricultural powerhouse that it is today. There are a lot of things in Argentina, a lot of um, things that just simply wouldn't be the way that they are without, without Roca. Uh, but he had a lot of uh, controversial, like uh, there were a lot of controversial things about Roca and his administrations as well. The political corruption, um, the fact that he opposed um, expanded suffrage. He really wanted power to just main, be maintained in, uh, in the hands of a very, very small group of elite wealthy landowners. And his campaign in the southern part, the campaign in the desert, in the southern part of Argentina, while it did expand Argentine national sovereignty and territory to what it is today um, it was also very controversial because there was displacement and death of uh, many indigenous people who were living down there in that area. Like I said, there's no country really that's without controversy. In my country, the United States, very controversial for a lot of the same reasons, honestly, as Argentina. There, were, there was a long era of manifest destiny in the United States where the United States government expanded into what was land populated by indigenous people and killed many indigenous people, relocated many indigenous people. And so we have very similar histories, the United States and Argentina in that regard. There was also a period of time in the United States when power was uh, firmly, firmly uh, held by a very small percentage of very wealthy individuals. And I think here in Argentina, just like in the United States, those uh, philosophical battles of how wealth should be distributed, who should have power, um, to what level should there be democracy, how much control should the government have and things like that. Those are still debates that are going on today in uh, both in Argentina and in the United States. But regardless of where you fall on any of those political issues, it's still very interesting to see a museum like that, to see an old preserved house just for the architecture, um, to learn a little bit about two pretty important historical figures here in Argentina, Jose Arce, and uh, Julio Argentino Roca. So I'm glad that we visited that museum. Uh, it's pretty small if you're coming here to check it out, but definitely worth it because it's free. You know, you can just show up here in Recoleta. If you're coming to visit Argentina, there's a good, in Buenos Aires, there's a good chance you're already staying in Recoleta, which means you're gonna wanna go like see Recoleta Cemetery and do the tour there. And if you do that, just go right across the street and check out the, uh, check out the Roca Museum because 
Uh, it's very, very interesting, and you'll learn a little bit more about the history of uh, a couple of very important Argentines. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There is plenty more coming from here in Buenos Aires, Argentina, so stick around for that, and we will see you in the next one.